Hello, I'm John Doyle Lee. I was born on September 6, 1812 to Ralph and Elizabeth Doyle Lee. Our home was in Randolph County, Illinois. At age three, my mother died after years of lingering illnesses, leaving me with my alcoholic father. From age seven to sixteen I was raised in an uncle's family. I worked for a time as a mail carrier before assuming managerial responsibility for my uncle's farm, then I worked several years as a store clerk in Galena, Illinois. Finally, I moved to Vandalia, Illinois, where I met and married Agatha and Woolsey in 1833. It was in Vandalia that my wife and I encountered Mormonism. In 1837 a Mormon missionary converted us to the young religion, which had been formally organized only seven years before. My religious passion quickly became the driving force in my life, prompting me to move in 1838 to a homestead near the Mormon town of Far West, Missouri. After a stay in Nauvoo, Illinois with the other saints, we moved to Canesville, Iowa. Brigham Young made a plan for a farm that would help provide food and grain for thousands of Mormons waiting in winter quarters to make the trip west. It was called Brigham Young's Farm or Summer Quarters. Young appointed Isaac Morley to oversee his farm and I was the foreman. The farm was designed to be a family cooperative. I estimate that the area cultivated was about 600 acres. The land was close to Fort Atkinson which was established in 1820 but abandoned in 1827. I drove the first of ten teams out of winter quarters and toward summer's quarters on March 29, 1847. The company set up camp the first night on a creek about three miles north of the old fort. At dawn, I left on horseback to explore the country within a five-mile area. The land I chose was bounded on the west by the bluff that runs between Moore Creek and Mill Creek, on the east by the Missouri River, on the south by Moore Creek and on the north by Mill Creek. Some of this land had been cultivated by the soldiers from Fort Calhoun in the spring of 1820. It was about 14 miles north of Winter Quarters. The land was divided with 75 acres to me, 30 acres to George D. Grant, 15 acres to Isaac Morley and 45 acres divided among at least 20 others. Homes were built from logs that were cut or from bricks left behind at Fort Atkinson. The construction took place on the northern edge and close together for defensive purposes. An epidemic hit the camp in midsummer of 1847. It was a disease not common to our people but resembling that of the cholera. When attacked a hot fever in head and bowels inwardly accompanied severe cramping distress in the stomach and bowels which if not checked causes an inflammation after which they soon mortify, hand, feet and legs cold as ice. Burials were made in the prairie on a high eminence about a half mile south of the settlement. I named the cemetery Fairview Burying Grounds. David Isom Young, age 20, was the first victim. He died on July 19, 1847 and was buried in the northwest corner. Seventeen people died during the epidemic. As the settlement of summer quarters had been established in the Indian Territory, keeping peace with Native American neighbors was an ongoing issue. Most of my interactions with them seemed to have been confrontations. The natives took cattle as a rent payment, although the residents often saw this as theft. In the spring of 1848, after increased contact with the local tribes, Brigham Young advised those who were not leaving for the Rockies to move to the Iowa side of the river. On April 15, 25 Pawnee arrived and asked for food, which I provided, along with housing for the night. On April 25, 160 natives arrived, including women and children and I responded in similar fashion, but I also sent a messenger to notify Young of the situation. This time, I also warned the natives that anyone lurking about at night was in danger of being shot. The next day, Young ordered the people at summer quarters to evacuate immediately, which we did in heavy rain, arriving in winter quarters between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. that same day. My families and I arrived in the Salt Lake Valley on September 24, 1848. I was the captain of 50 in the Brigham Young Company. I was sent by Brigham Young to establish settlements in such places as Iron County, Garfield County, 
and Washington County. I established a farm at New Harmony and was called to be the branch president of the local congregation. I moved some of my family to more remote locations including being asked by Brigham Young to create a ferry system to cross the Colorado River. It is now called Lee's Ferry in Arizona which helped open the Arizona Territory. I died March 27, 1877 and I am buried in the Panguitch Cemetery, Garfield County, Utah. This is my sojourn in the wilderness story.